the county funds the court, but we're not another department of the county. And any consolidation of the courts or merger of the 42-1 district court here in Romeo and the 42-2 district court in New Baltimore would have to have the participation of the Michigan and approval of the Michigan State Legislature. And uh, so that would be a necessary prerequisite uh, before you could even say it was feasible. How would this move affect our area? Well, I think that uh, several things. I think this is an important community center. As you know, Jeannie, uh, we have a group here that meets every month. We work uh, very vigorously on local uh, drug and alcohol issues, particularly with our youth. Uh, we're in the center here of uh, a number of communities. We serve nine separate governmental entities at the northern end and northwestern end of the county. Uh, you know, this building is used from everything from, uh, well, for example, you've been here and we've hung the quilts for Relay to Life to having open houses, the Boy Scouts, the Girl Scouts. This is an important community center. And uh, so it would be closed. But of course, much more importantly, for those basic governmental services that are provided by the judicial branch of government. Uh, let me give an example. Uh, you're in business and you've gotten a bad check and you want to pursue that in the small claims division or as mom and dad, your 16-year-old has just uh, gotten their first traffic ticket, or uh, you've been summoned to jury duty, or uh, you know it's a landlord-tenant matter. All of the citizenry for those basic district court services would be driving to New Baltimore. And of course, the district court is the basic entry-level court, and if citizens have contact with the judicial branch of their government, it's much more likely that it'll be at the district court level rather than the circuit court downtown. So it would, uh, there'd be a lot of travel time involved. The court would be much more remote from the citizenry here at the north and northwestern end of the county. And I think one of the biggest impacts would, of course, be on law enforcement. Um, an officer uh, on the streets of our local communities uh, Every ticket that was written, every criminal complaint uh, would be going all the way over to New Baltimore to uh, file that complaint, to testify, to follow up on that case, rather than be spending that time, probably about 45, 50 minutes each way, rather than spending that time protecting the citizens on the streets of our communities. If our court were moved to New Baltimore, you would be serving outside of the area that elected you. Would this be a problem? Well, I think it is. Um, I think it creates a real anomaly. I'm researching it right now, but I'm not aware of any district judge in the state who is actually sitting outside his electoral district. In other words, I'm elected to this position. We elect judges in Michigan by the citizens of the villages of Romeo and Armada, the cities of Memphis and Richmond, and the townships of uh, Washington, Bruce, Armada, and are made array in Richmond townships. And uh, we serve that district. And I would be, if I were sitting in New Baltimore then, I would be outside the electoral area. And to me, there's a certain disenfranchisement of the citizens that have placed me in office. I think it's a concern. And I think it's a concern that would have to be looked at uh, by the county and the state in partnership and looked at by the state legislature. Commissioners have said that other district courts in the county break even or provide added revenue. But the 42nd District Court has fees and costs imposed on defendants that are too low. Is that true? No, Jeannie, I don't think it is. The, uh, the district court here, I think, has a very representative uh, fines, fees, cost schedule. Of course, we're always studying that to see if we're in, in conformity with other similar district courts. And I'd be very happy to work on that issue and have worked on that issue extensively with the county in the past. I realize that it's an important uh, uh, revenue area. But uh, I would say we're not at the highest, but we're certainly not at the lowest. I think we're probably right about at a mean average. The difficulty is that it all depends upon how you uh, account for and allocate those dollars. Now, we have receipts for 2009. All those figures are in. We had total gross receipts here at the district court of about $1,465,000. That would be on all our cases. That would be filing fees, costs, fines, 
traffic tickets, probation fees, testing fees, everything. My total budget is a million eighty-five thousand dollars for this court for uh, 2010. So if you look at that, we are almost four hundred thousand dollars into the black. The problem is, is that the way these courts were established in the late 60s and early 70s, with the county being our funding or control unit, as we sometimes call it, the uh, county doesn't get 100% of those revenues. The way this is structured, about 40% of those revenues uh, would be going to the state or other governmental entities. And once those are taken out, only at that point is this court running in the red. Actually, we're running in the black. I just learned that you have been assigned to the circuit court as a cost-saving measure. Tell us a little about that. Well, I don't think it's entirely just a cost-saving measure, but certainly that's part of it. As a state uh, district judge, any sitting judge, be a district judge, circuit judge, probate judge, can be called upon from time to time to sit in another court uh, to make sure that judicial services are effectively delivered to the people of the uh, uh, County of Macomb, the state of Michigan, and I'm going to be filling in for Judge Servito next week. The, uh, that, of course, the circuit court is also funded by the county, and I was asked by the chief judge of the circuit court if I would do that. And in the spirit of the long, excellent partnership and cooperation that we've had with the county, I agreed to do that. And uh, Judge Dick McLean, my uh, magistrate, the retired district judge here, uh, will be here. I expect to be going back and forth between downtown the circuit court and here on a regular basis and, and handling, handling my regular docket as well. You mentioned the merger was still a work in progress. Is there anything residents and taxpayers can do? Well, I think certainly they should have their input. We want to be able to deliver effective governmental services, in this case judicial services, to the people of this district um, in a very uh, fiscally sound and responsible manner. And I think it takes the partnership of the citizenry, uh, the judicial branch, the county, and the state to all work towards that end together. So I think that the citizens should very definitely have uh, their input uh, and their impact on this process. And as you say, it's only in the earliest discussion stages. Well, thank you for answering our questions. Is there anything you'd like to add? Oh, sure, Jeannie. I'd just like to emphasize that we have had over decades now, and through uh, all my administration, really productive, effective partnership and cooperation with the County of Macomb. Uh, we're going to work with them. You know, I, I did 13 years in the legislative branch of the government. I was a county commissioner myself. Um, I, I understand fully the extremely difficult, I would say unprecedented, economic situation. I would not trade my job at all to be on the County Board of Commissioners and facing the decisions they've, they've got to make for the benefit of uh, for all the citizens. And uh, we're going to work in partnership with them and continue to do that to come in with a uh, fiscally sound and responsible 2011 budget. Well, thanks again, Judge LaDuke. Also in court news, Timothy Ray Prince, who was found guilty of kidnapping and murdering our Mater resident Dorothy Cizek last spring and dumping her body in a ditch, was sentenced last week. He will spend the rest of his life in prison with no possibility of parole. A Romeo school bus driver had quite a surprise last week when she arrived at Retsy to pick up her students. She smelled smoke and called the Washington Fire Department. By the time they arrived, the bus was engulfed in flames. The bus, valued at $100,000, was a total loss, but thankfully there were no students on board at the time. Romeo High School would be hosting their 12th annual college night March 16th. Representatives from the military and more than 60 schools will be on hand to talk to students about their post-high school options. This event is from 6.30 to 8 p.m. at the Retsy, and it's free. Washington Township resident Debbie Speck, coordinator for the Stan Babinski We Love You Stan Stay Strong fundraisers, is here to tell us about some of the upcoming fundraising. Thanks, Jeannie. Stanley Babinski, a 2008 Romeo High School graduate and childhood friend of my son and many of your sons and daughters, is currently battling non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Stanley's type 
of cancer is fast growing